Okay. So getting started with SQL. So what we're going to discuss is what is uh, what is SQL, uh, why it's so popular, why it's a good programming language to learn, how it's used across different industries, uh, type of things you can do with SQL, uh, overview of databases, and uh, why we need them. Okay. So what exactly is SQL? So SQL is, it stands for Structured Query Language. Uh, some people pronounce it SQL, SQL. Doesn't really, that part doesn't really matter. Um, what, it, what you do need to know is that SQL is a language for getting um, and saving data to a database. And uh, you're gonna see that, like if you're currently in the job market for data analyst, data scientist position, uh, SQL is gonna be everywhere. Um, and it has these functions that let a user read, manipulate, and uh, change data. And what it came out in like the 1970s, um, and it hasn't changed to, like the, the difference in technology, but like the concept of the same, this is to get data from a database. Um, compare that to like other languages, like say JavaScript, where every couple of months, there might be a new package that like makes you have to learn a whole bunch of new stuff. And it's loosely based off uh, relational algebra. So this is, I mean, it's really useful if like if you have a math background um, for some physics, chemistry, like uh, if you learn set theory, um, some of the concepts will uh, be, a, be a lot more familiar with joining um, and talking to uh, databases with unions. Uh, so something that you know, I think everyone here has had some, some type of uh, exposure to is Excel. And you can think of a lot of the uh, comparisons there. Um, a database would be like the whole uh, spreadsheet file uh, and the table is each sheet in that spreadsheet and each one has should have a name, a column, row, they're both uh, would be the same thing. And then SQL, what it, that it gives you is this language of doing what's called CRUD. CRUD stands for creating, reading, updating, and deleting. Um, these operations uh, to produce neither new tables, alter, getting data, and so forth. So why SQL? I mean, if everyone here has had uh, Excel, what do we need SQL for? So today in this age of big data, um, you can't really hold all your data in a, in a local machine. So you'd have a giant server containing terabytes, petabytes of data um, to analyze. So this isn't like all in a bunch of uh, Excel files. Um, no, you can't open it. I'm sure people here have had that experience of like you have a huge Excel file with you know 900K, even 100,000 rows. And you start seeing sluggishness, or if you try to like pivot it, they'll start giving you little errors. Um, and like that, that was like a big reason why I wanted to learn SQL. Um, just that opening up these big data files just didn't work unless I had SQL. So this is another big one is why SQL is so popular is that, uh, is that you write this, the query and you can share that query with other people. Like, oh, this is how I got my data. This is the group bias. This is, this is like the chain of, uh, code that I wrote and I can share that with someone. So it's reproducible. With Excel, um, you don't know if someone did some data cleaning on their own and those steps aren't necessarily there for reproducibility. Um, so you wanna have that trail. Uh, so what are we to do? So we're gonna store this data on the server and uh, SQL is gonna select that data. Uh, this comes from Seth Rosen. Uh, he has like a company, Hashpath. Uh, I used to, um, we used to consult the same company. Uh, and he had this, he had this thing that was like, people are like looking for jobs um, for entry level. And they're like, what do I learn? So Python, SQL, Power BI. And there's like a lot of different tools, but like the one common denominator and why he made this joke is that like SQL, 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 SQL. Like if you're going to learn, if you're gonna learn one thing for a data analyst position, it's, it's SQL. Uh, and then like, but why is it so popular? Uh, this comes from DataQuest. Um, the these charts over here that like the percent of jobs that it's like over 40 percent of them are going to mention sql um and then it's like python uh, machine learning r spark and so on and part of that is some jobs are going to be like some they're going to be python shops like oh at this company we use python oh this company we use r this company we use x y and z tool every company is if they have a database they're going to use some type of sql um, everything, and then this guy, um, the quote here is that everything uses SQL or some derivative of it. 
meaning like even like Presto or Athena, like it's not a relational database, but like the way that you would access the data is very like similar to a regular database. Um, so again, if you're looking for a job, you should focus on what skills uh, employers want. Um, so it's three times as more in these things and it's gonna set you apart. Like for some data, like very, very interesting. Like I know there's some companies that they're like, oh, if that's like, I have like a master's degree in like a STEM field or something. But if you show that, oh, you already came out of school um, or you're switching jobs to SQL there, it's gonna be a lot easier to get up and running. Uh, this is like a query, like a basic skeleton um, of how a query would look. So you'd have your select. So these are the columns you would want. So if you've ever seen like a giant Excel with like a whole bunch of like uh, columns, like this is like, all right, we only care about column A, B, and C. Let's just get those columns. You have to tell it where the data is coming from, which table, joining, if you're if you feel like you're gonna join, where is like your filters, group by, if you have aggregate, non-aggregate data. Having is the equivalent for that. Order by limit is fairly uh, self-explanatory. Um, the one thing I really like about SQL and why like I recommend it like for people who are like trying to break into like a technical field is that you can learn 80% of what you need to know of SQL like with about a week of just, if you just focused one week straight on SQL, you would, you'd be able to get pretty far in that one, in that one week of dedicated uh, practice compared to like say, something like Python, where it might take you like months to get there. And for most use cases, that one, like those weeks that are like, if you're not, you know, 100% dedicated to it, those three, four weeks of it, you can get pretty well and then feel comfortable writing that on your resume. Like when, when I teach this bootcamp, a lot of people are like, when, like the first question they ask, like, am I going to be okay writing this on my uh, resume? And it's like, if it's SQL and you've taken like, you know, 18 hours of it and like you've done the practice and you're doing like a little bit of the homeworks, then you're ready to go. Where they're like, I've seen people take like some other classes, unless they do a full on boot camp, they don't, they don't have that full um, like feeling of fluency in it. So that's part of it is like, you feel, you feel like you're up and ready, up and ready much quicker with SQL. Um, and part of that reason why is that SQL is a very targeted language. Like it works on databases. Like you're getting data from a database. You know, compared to say like Python um, is that Python can make websites. Python can be used for machine learning. Python can be used like the glue to hook up a bunch of different scripts together. Um, so there's all these different things there, but like SQL is databases. Uh, and it's it's been in demand. Um, it's like, I mentioned it came out in the seventies um, and it's like, I mean, this is a chart only from 2014 to 2019, but it's like always been like, this is, this is a top scale. It's been there for a while. Um, and like compared to like, say Python's been getting more and more popular job. Like there are some that's gonna come and go. Um, like SQL is just, it's there. Uh, this is also from DataQuest, how data, uh, SQL can be used. So, SQL, as mentioned previously, is that it shares data and like what another word for this database is a RDMS, Relational Database Management System. So it's just the way that your table is all connected together. Um, I think I have like a picture of something like that. So like this is a relational databases and like these are all, you can think of all these different squares as tables. And there's things that relate to each other. So this ID comes over here. This user ID is from the user table. This song ID, um, there's this is the song ID, which refers to song ID over here. So everything relates to one another. And this you can think of as a database and what it links to. Um, so using SQL, you, uh, you can store this data on every client of your business. Um, the key contacts for sales. So you can be like, okay, like this is a file of all our clients, but I only want to know who spends more than $5,000 on, on this um, in the past, like certain decade or month or 30 days and so on. So you can, if you use a database, you can get all that stuff in seconds. So this is, uh, these are the business questions. So this is like two fairly, um, common types of like SQL like um, queries that are right. So this is a, qu a query. This is something I'm like, I'm asking the database. I'm saying, hey, select these purchase IDs. 
sum up the quantity from this table purchases, join this other table on this certain relation, the purchase ID is equal to the PID, just purchases table, and group by that non-aggregate. So that might not mean anything right now, but this is just uh, getting there. And this is like another one of like job volume uh, per month where it's like, okay, we store the job month they created at time and like when it happened the exact second. So we don't want it grouped by the second, group it by the month. So truncate that timestamp, give it to me by the organization, join by those two, and then give me the count of jobs there. So this is something I, I, I write this over and over again, like in different, in very similar ways. And it can get to like a little bit more complicated uh, where it's like, this is for Z scores. This is some like statistics where it's like, find out where the outliers are for like, before we saw the jobs per month, like, okay, in a 60 day time span, um, let us know if this is how you calculate Z score. It's a window function. Definitely not expecting anyone to like, look at this book. Oh, I got it. But this just shows that you can do a little bit more than just getting data. You can analyze and be like, okay, if it's case when this, then that, let us know uh, what to do there. Um, and what else can you do with SQL? Um, this is uh, for WordPress. So WordPress like powers like 25% of the web or some amazing number. Um, and like, I have like a WordPress website and like, if you ever wanna like delete spam, um, there's a time where it's like really annoying where you have to like filter all these things and like you only can do it 25 at a time. If you knew a little bit of SQL, you can go in um, like there's this whole thing like time saving SQL queries. And it'll like you go into the database and you just like delete from this table where this condition is set and done. So like something that like might take you like half an hour can be done in three seconds if you have this query lying around somewhere. And like one thing is that like, oh, you, I thought SQL is just databases and this is web development, what's that? So it's still, this is the, this is the data structure for that project. And one thing that's really nice about SQL is that once you get it, like you can be very domain agnostic. So like to me, I work as a consultant and like I have a fashion company, a fashion um, business and that where I, you know, I have to do, write queries for them, do the BI for them. And they have a database, but it's like very similar to a pro services company or ad tech company. It's like the way that they're structured these tables, it's like, okay, this is the table I'm gonna have to use. These are some in new synchronicities, but these are the joins are usually this ID to that ID. And they're usually pretty like cross. Like once you get one of them, you can move on to the next fairly quickly. Um, and this is a little bit about how WordPress uses SQL from a WB beginner. Um, so they use uh, a flavor of SQL called MySQL. And this is a tool that WordPress has used uh, to store um, all the different blog information. And it's like, a, they, they say database is like a filing cabinet. And WordPress uses this to organize all the important data from your website, posts, pages, images, and so on. And MySQL is this, this cabinet that like connects everything together. And they need, and WordPress needs this so you can store all your data. Um, so like MySQL is, ju is just a type of SQL. Um, like we use uh, for like one of the, for the boot camps is usually Postgres. Um, once you know one, the other, like the, the differences are pretty minor. Um, like sometimes I might be like one of them uses distinct and one of them uses unique. So usually like if you say like, oh, I got an error in this code, a quick Google being like, hey, distinct in MySQL, distinct in Postgres. And they'll be like, oh, it's one word different or something like that. Uh, so Kinstub uh, had this like definition of a database. Um, so the concept of a database uh, isn't unique to WordPress. So um, it's just a way of collecting data and this data is stored electronically. Um, so like we were talking about file cabinets before, but this is some, some computer system um, and that can be accessed on different sizes. Like I have a, uh, a small droplet on DigitalOcean. I think it's like one gig or something like that, whatever the small size is, which is just like hosted for like practice problems to like teach SQL. And then I've worked on like some bigger companies where it could be like petabyte scale of, of, of different data. And, and then people can go to like AWS and get like a database and like scale it up as far as they need. Um, what's common about it is that like, it's just an easy way to get access to this data in that's in rows and columns and tables. Um, so I'm gonna pause a little bit. Um, one, I 
I'm well aware I talk pretty quickly. So I want to like, you know, pause a little bit um, and be like, hey, what do questions we have so far? Um, so like, just let that sink in. So please, you can also, you can chat, um, you can do direct message, you can do it to the group, but I'm gonna, you know, take some time to, to pause right now. Hi, sorry, I joined a little bit late. Um, my name is Francisca. Um, for the beginning portion of of the webinar, did you um, mention that you prefer to start with WordPress or is, is there another? Oh, um, so Word, WordPress is up for like to make to make websites. Um, it's just something I personally like use if I have like to make a blog or I have to like made a for a nonprofit, they just needed a website up. Um, is that that's there, but like WordPress itself uses uh, a database. Uh, they use MySQL. Like to, um, but like to me, like when I said, where, um, where did you join us? Oh, I, I think I joined you a couple slides in. So got it. It, it I was just wondering like kind of okay. um, where, where you kind of joined and where from SQL. Okay. Yeah. Like to me, I, whenever I recommend like recommending SQL, like it's usually uh, Postgres, uh, Postgres, like Instagram uses them, Reddit uses them. Um, and to me, it's like, it's open source. And we could talk about that a little bit towards the end. Like I, yeah, Postgres, you can, it's open source that anyone can get started and it's pretty popular. Sorry, what is that what oh, yeah, Postgres like in stands the, for? The beginning class, what Postgres stands for. Um, I'm actually not sure what the, what it came from Postgres. Like to me, I know Redshift came from like the shift away from Oracle and Oracle is named Red. Um, oh, it's, okay. It's, yeah, I don't know what the it's, actual- It's yeah. one of the like MySQL. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Let's see, what does it mean? Relational database. It was renamed to Postgres. I mean, there, yeah, there was time like one of it was like Ingress or something like that, but that was, yeah, that's not, it's not relevant uh, for this part. Uh, yeah, but Postgres is good. Uh, MySQL is fairly popular. Um, and then usually you just find out like what your company's doing or like if you're like looking at job, uh, job postings, I'll usually even like, like knowledge of SQL, preferably X, Y, and Z. But like to me, when I first started, it was a lot of like Vertica. And Vertica is like very like ad tech specific, but like once like I went to another company and they were uh, at, uh, they use Postgres, like it took maybe three days, not even like three minutes to really get them after three days. I was like, okay, this is, this is the same thing. I just need to like tweak this one word that I use or they can't use list tag with an underscore. I have to, it was very similar. Um, okay. Uh, one Thank question you. I got was about uh, Power BI. Oh, no problem. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I got a question about Power BI and how SQL will help you uh, knowing that. That is actually, I actually have that over here. So this is um, like all different uh, data visualizations that you can use with SQL. So Power BI, I remember it was, oh, it was literally the number one. Um, so how you can use it is that there's a, there's a SQL editor with Power BI. Um, so one thing that you can do is that with school, um, you can extend it even further. A lot of times with these tools, it's like, it's like called WYSIWYG and they won't like, there's a little bit of say, like they pre-built a lot of things for you. So if whatever it does, it's a lot easier to just drag and drop what you need. Um, but if you know SQL, you can extend it a little bit further. So that's why it would help you. Um, like with, if you know Power BI and SQL, that's like, oh, okay. This person can do a lot more um, with the BI tool. Um, he's a little, it's like a little bit more advanced. Um, okay. Any further questions so about anything I've said so far? Or
So this is um, DB Fiddle. Um, I can send this to everybody here. Let's see to everyone. So DB Fiddle kind of like lets you just make a as is small uh, database. Um, if this doesn't work, so like sometimes I don't know how many people are, have joined us at this current second, but like sometimes if there's too many people, it might give an error. If, if that is the case, let me know. And then what we can do is like, some people will be on the, like this is 9.6, some people will go on 11, and then that's like different instances and I'll work. But if that happens, just private chat me and I'll, uh, we'll troubleshoot how to do that. So this is a, this is a schema where it's like, I just like put in, hey, make some table, make some accounts, um, make, make the, create the table, put some data in there. Same thing with organizations and jobs, like just create some data that we can practice in. So this is kind of like how the data gets in there. A lot of times it's not even like this, it's kind of like more copy commands or some sort of like ETL that kind of like puts the data in the database. But like if you have a little bit of data, um, usually this is this is exactly how you do it. Like I actually had to do this for a client where it's like, okay, they hired like it's a, it's a startup where so they're not hiring that many people and they had to hire three different people. And uh, so we just did insert command. So I said, okay, create this table. I mean, it was already there. Insert these three values and uh, then we can continue. Uh, okay. Is, does anyone have uh, any issues accessing uh, DB Fiddle? Okay. If you do, um, feel free to uh, uh, message me. All right, so this is just like the first query. So it's a very, it's a query all columns from the jobs table uh, and limit it to 10 rows. So we're just gonna go here, copy and run. And okay, and there you go, this is the execution. And we can see that it's gonna give you all the columns from the jobs table. So if we scroll down over here on the left, uh, we have we can see what all those columns are, ID, account, organization, created at, status, um, state, and costs, um, and then we see that over here, and it's going to just query it, everything. Over here, I have a con I even put a condition that the state should be New York. So what we're going to see here is that everything, we're only going to see data from New York. If I comment this out and run it again. You'll see that doesn't even like that. Select star from Jones. There we go. Um, we can see that um, the state, that might have been the whole, like if more than X amount of people on the site, it'll just error out. Um, so if that does happen to you, just press refresh. Uh, so here we see that when I don't have that condition of where New York, where state app equals New, New York, you can see that we're gonna get data from New York, New Jersey, Texas, uh, and so on. Okay. So here's another example of that. So query all columns where the cost is above 50. So anytime you have like a filter like that, you have to use the where clause. And we can see, all right, what's that column gonna be costs, literally called costs. And that's greater than 50. And now everything here is above 50. And then you can do other things like doesn't, you don't have to do a select star. You can just get, hey, give me the count star of jobs where state ab equals n of y. And you can go get that answer of 15. And we can go through all of these if you if you like, but if you have any questions like, hey, this, I mean, I've kept this up for a while. Um, so if you ever just like want to like mess around with SQL, here you go. You usually don't see it in this case where you have this with what you did on the left side, it tends to look more like this. Um, like this is a uh, also open source tool. 
where you can go in um, and then just you know query query data. So you usually see it like this. Query can query again. It's okay. So this is how to do a count of jobs. In case I didn't want to do that, I can do this. And this shows me, okay, there were these states and let's say it's like, oh, this is annoying. I wanna see who had the most jobs. Order by the two descending. And if you're wondering what that one and two are, one refers to the state ab. So I could write explicitly that. And then I could also write order by count star descending. Um, I just like the ones and twos because it's just quicker to write. If it helps you to be more explicit, go ahead. So we can see that Texas has the most jobs uh, in this database with 20. Okay, does that answer your question? See if I can connect to this one. Validated. If not, I can go connect to a different database. Okay. So this is a little bit more of what you would see in uh, at work. If they use, um, if you know, you're connected to a database, sometimes you might have like multiple databases uh, and you go in and you can do, you write your query, you just, you have your query over here and then you see the output like this. So that's like a little bit more common what you see. Or um, if you have a BI tool like Mode or Periscope, it's kind of like you write your SQL, you get your output, and then you can, you know, you make your charts, which is a little bit more where more companies are moving towards. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about the SQL. Just make sure. Okay. So how are we doing so far? Any questions um, about how we're doing so far? How do I learn about um, the different statements and um, commands available? So what, um, just because statements might be like referred to a few different things, like what what type of statements, like the count versus the sum, like what what are you trying to do? And then like maybe I can uh, get you there. Yes, like the count, the sum and ordering, like mm -hmm. creating sequences, you know, chron okay. chronological versus alphabetical. Chrono well, what do you mean chronological? Oh, like, oh, how to sort, how to sort your data? Yeah, like, I, I guess, like, what are some of the different options mm -hmm. for that? So I don't have I work in Excel, so I don't, I, I don't really know what's available in SQL. <laughs> okay. So you can, I, almost every, like a lot, a lot of the same functions are, you can just be like how to do X, Y, and Z in SQL. And then you, that will be how to, like, do you have one uh, in mind or? And we can see we can do it together, or just more more general. Um, I don't have anything specific, but mm -hmm. like to me, one would be like average. Like you would literally just very similar to Excel. Like, okay, what's the average costs? Okay. And, okay. Oh, that doesn't work because of this. There you go. So 37 point that. So there is, you know, you can average that. You can sum it. So a lot of them are gonna be very, very similar to, um, to Excel. If there's something, so five, five, six, 
if you have like uh, something like standard deviation is there, um, like you can concatenate, like if you have to work with strings, you can concatenate the information. So there's like a lot of um, crossover uh, bet between them. Um, and that is, a, someone just private chatted, a very good question that, um, so this is like an introduction to SQL. So I'm not going in the same order as if like when I teach the bootcamp, um, but like, so I said select star. So what is, what does select star mean? Um, wait, wait, oh, she, hold on. Let me answer this, uh, fully answer and answer this question. Um, post, uh, so with Postgres, one thing I really like about them is that it's, um, it's manual. The documentation is, is like the best. Um, so if I have a, like a lot of times I have a question about like dates um, and it's like, okay, how do I do this with dates? Or like, what can I do with like time difference between like, I can extract, okay, it's here. Um, or, you know, I can get it to trunk. I know I use a lot. So date trunking. Oh, that's what I use there. C section 9.92. And it'll tell me like all the different stuff I can truncate to. Um, or like, you know, Postgres. So their documentation is, is, an, is one reason why like it's open source. It's very easy to use. Um, Postgres statistical functions. So they have like a whole page on their different aggregate functions that they have. And they'll tell you like all the stuff that it'll do. It's like, okay, if you do average, this is the average arithmetic mean of all non-null input values. I can do the min, max, um, JSON values. And then it's like even more like you can do covariates, uh, standard deviation, mode, median, um, percentile, like ranking functions. It'll, so usually like if you have something very specific you want, I would just put in like whatever flavor of SQL you're using. If it is Postgres, if it's MySQL, be like Postgres and I wanna do a uh, percentile um, because this is, this is one where it is like, this was one of the vertical ones where it's slightly different or it's like in Redshift, you can use median. But with Postgres, you have to write percentile, 50th percentile, which is the same thing. So like, that's where it's like, okay, you just have to Google that that specific thing. But if you have something very specific, like right now, like, hey, maybe we can like uh, troubleshoot that together. Okay, and then, okay, the select star. So what is select star? So right now, when you, uh, when you select star a table, um, you get everything. You get all columns in that table. It's like a star uh, refers to wildcard. It's like, just give me everything. Whatever it is, I want it all. So it's like, I don't know, like if you don't want it, you can be very explicit. It's like, I want, I just want the ID and status. Now you only get these two, but if you put star, you get everything. Um, this was, I don't know how many years ago this was. I remember I, the first time I got SQL access at a company, um, this guy came up to me, says, Matthew, if you select star my database, this is your last day here. What he meant to say was scared, scared me real good is that when you select star and you don't put a limit, you get the entire database. And, that, and like one thing I said before is that like this stuff can't live on a local computer. So you don't want to do a select star from a table and just get the entire table. Like it might crash something. You don't want to do that. So you always want to have like limits in there. Um, Beaver has like an automatic 200 limit to a lot of this stuff. Like you usually be like, okay, built-in limits. Um, same thing with mode. Um, I don't know what their like built-in one is, um, but they also have like limits there as well. Limit hundred, there it is. And, like you can explicitly turn it off if you want, but the default is on. So like select star, you get everything. So if you do select star from table, like if you have a big company, you do select star from your job table, it might not run and you might just be like, okay, query, like if it's a well, like a well-oiled machine, it'll just be like query took four, more than four minutes, done. The query just failed. Uh, but you don't want it to be like, okay, the cluster is just going and going and going. And like <laughs> there were times where I'm working on a company and um, I took all the resources running this query and people are like, hey, who's using, who's using all these resources where it's like, okay, I need to be very specific, use limits, use the where clause, be very surgical in my response of what I need um, from the table. Okay, again, put your, raise your hands, put in the chat, whatever you'd like. Okay, here we go. Um, since you're using the where permission is on the page. So it's not needed. So I could remove 
um, this clause here and just run it. So I don't need that limit clause. What you would, what, I, what I'm saying, the limit condition is uh, is needed in terms of like if you have a lot of data, you don't want to select everything. You want to put limits there. Like sometimes you do want everything. Sometimes you're like, oh, I want to know all the customers that came to um, that used X, Y, and Z plumber from uh, the last 90 days. So I don't want to put. A, I don't want a limit. I want everything. But since I said, oh, 90 days, it's fine. Like I'm, it's, I'm hoping that like it's going to be okay. And there are times where it's like, oh, they want um, every email, like something crazy. Like they wanted a lot of data. And like, if I, I, even if I didn't put a limit there, it's gonna be too big to actually get out and like the timeout, four minutes that I had. Um, some databases have longer timeout systems, but this one had a four minute timeout. So it's like, what I did is that, okay, I didn't use a limit. I just did it every month or week or whatever it was and just did it five different times. And then just sent that like, took five of them, combined the five different Excel files and then sent it back. So like you use SQL and you can use Excel or like, I know people who are like very, like they hate Excel and they'll be like, I'd rather write a Python script that will combine the five files together. It depends, sometimes I've done that too. Um, but if it's like three, four files, it's easier to just like copy and paste them into uh, 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 what's called Excel. Uh, Excel. Okay. A great question. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to see me to do with this um, table or you have questions like, oh, how would I do X, Y, and Z? Um, that's why I'm here. Okay. So yeah, this is just an example from mode. Um, Personal, like for work, I usually like Sizen's Periscope, but this one is free. Um, so it's like very good for demonstrative, like a, a lot of boot camps, like we like to use this one. So this is just an example of, um, you know, do that whole date trunk for the month. This is Q1, make the chart, you just tell it to make a chart for you. And then it'll, you know, it'll look like this. So, okay, show an example of group by. So this is actually, I was getting there, oh, nice. Um, so you have all this month data and you just wanna, um, you wanna just aggregate it by that month to get there. So let's see what's taking this one so long. Dio Tavuna. Okay, so this is just for every month that we have, get me the count of jobs there. So if I don't have this, so let's just do, um, and jobs.id, comment this out, comment this out. I'm just gonna put a limit here so it runs a little faster. And then, yeah, in, in SQL, um, you put this two dashes there and it comments it out. So there we go, I have a month. So this is the, this is the created app. This is like the actual time the job was created. So 2018, January 1st, um, it's ISO time. So 1556, and this is the job ID, okay? But I, I wanna group it like by the month time. So it's like, all right, take this and give it to me in the month. So that's just January. So let's, let's do that. And so count star in this situation is kind of like, if there's anything in this row, count it. If I, but in most tables, if you put, if the ID should always be there, like there's usually the DBA, the database administrator be like, ID must be there. You can never be blank. So this are usually equivalent. So this is more explicit where you can write count job ID. So count this from public jobs. Um, and then let's let's just run this and see what happens. It's not gonna let me run it. It's gonna give me some error. Let's see how useful mode is and be like, hey, you can't do this. There's a single error. Your created app must be in the group by clause because you have um, something that's aggreg aggregated and something that's not aggregated. So I'm like, okay, group by one. Group by one just means group by this. So I can write this in here.
And then there you go. I got my, these are the different months and the jobs uh, corresponding there. So that's an example of using a uh, group by. So whenever you have both uh, some type of aggregate function, so the count sums, uh, max and mins, you usually you group by what is not aggregated. So this is this is like very similar to like ex an Excel pivot table. Like this, if like you have something in that like right bottom right corner, you need like you're grouping by the stuff that's on the was it on the left to the left of that. Okay. And then you make dashboards, which is outside of scope of like just the regular SQL class. But one of these, um, we'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, goes through about like data visualizations. Okay, so this is, yeah, so SQL joins. So this is something like I've been teaching SQL for a while. Um, usually joins mess people up a lot. So I'm just gonna speak about them very quickly about like what it is. Like, so I mentioned that we live in this world of like giant, like big data. And that like you have all these tables that, you know, you don't want to have one, like usually you don't want one table of everything, like a million um, different columns. So you break that up in different ways. Um, what you do is like very similar to VLOOKUP in Excel. You're kind of like, okay, take this data, join it, and you can enrich, um, you can enrich that table. So like these are just examples of that, of, you never use, I never use this one. Let's do hopefully a good left join. Whatever, these are just like examples like, okay, Select these columns, do a join from table A to table B on some link of each other. And this is kind of like showing you that like, when you do a left join, you want everything from A and then you only get from B where they exist in both. And then when you have um, an inner join, it's like the, the union, it's like, it has to exist in both of them. So there's all these different um, things with joins. And then like what you're joining on is usually like here um, where it all connects to each other. Like, okay, this ID goes to song ID and this song goes to here. This defense website, which can make SQL commands, syntax with it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that one. So we're good with this one. This is just different BI tools. Usually like SQL is used in all these different things. Um, but yeah, okay, Let's see what the rest of us. So, okay, four examples of uh, basic commands. So I've seen stuff like SQL cheat sheets. Um, usually they're like, you know, they're okay. It's just like very like basic. Um, that might be one thing that you might wanna read um, or I'm gonna get to it um, of some other places. So data school, this too, let's see if I have more. Second. Select star, okay, put that there also. Okay. So one of them is data school. So this is again, Chartio. Um, they have this whole um, school of where they show you all the different functions. Um, select star, order by, where clause and so on. They'll let you like get into it a little bit. So, hey, select what you want from this table and you can run the SQL uh, in your in your browser. And they'll like, they usually let you, you know, test your skills and like run your own SQL. Like this is gonna be wrong because I just, you know, wanted to just show you what I'm doing. And then the other one is mode. They also have uh, some really good uh, data tutorials as well. And one thing very good with, um, with mode is that if you don't have your own database, you can just go in here and they have a public warehouse for you to just like, you know, select data from. And like, you can play around with one of these. So as far as best, it's very hard to answer. Um, you know, there's a, there are a bunch of like free tutorials out online. Um, if you're, this is like, if your company is, you know, a lot of them will give you continuing education credits or you want a very structured way of learning SQL, um, which is, you know, why we have like the, the boot camp. So one of them is the SQL boot camp. Um, it's, you know, right now in Corona, they have it online. Um, it'll, you know, talk about, you know, all the stuff that we did today, um, how to do them. You can download the syllabus and they'll like, it'll go into what a join is, 
Um, you know, I'll talk about the basic um, concepts that we did already. So that part will be review. Um, the GUI, like, you know, this one, like out of say a 30 person class, like I'll say it's a 10, like a 10 person class, three people will have issues with getting dbeaver. Like, I don't know what it is. You know, like some driver didn't work or something like that. And we'll like go over how to make sure that dbeaver works for you guys. Um, querying, filtering, inserting data. So that is like the SQL bootcamp. So that's another one. It's like the, the best value of getting one of these class of, of, of like a noble desktop type class is that you have access to the instructor. Um, like there'll be times where we'll be like, okay, what did you have trouble with? And then like, let's work, let's like talk that out. Um, I've seen, yeah, people who like, you know, they've used mode, they've used data school. They're good. Like I've, and the people who got like, they've gotten jobs from this. Um, but if you're looking for that structured way, that's where um, one of these boot camps would work. Um, and then two, it's like, okay, if I, I came from like a, uh, I'm looking to get hired, there's two like other, like these certificate programs. Um, if you're looking specifically for data analytics, um, they have like, okay, if you're coming with no Excel knowledge, this will get you pretty far up there. SQL to level three and same thing with Tableau. Tableau is, um, another data visualization that I've seen at a bunch of companies. Same, like same thing with the data science. So this is like um, a little bit more, more advanced with that. And, but it's still like, whether you wanna go to the data analyst track or data science track, you're still gonna take like, you know, the eight, it's like a 18 hours of a SQL bootcamp, but then they also have like, they have more Python. Cause most, um, we saw earlier that like, Python is like right up there with like, Oh, you want a job in data? This is what you need to learn. So yeah, and then like one strong thing I've, I've given, I've taught SQL at like three different, like at companies. Um, and like one thing I really liked about what uh, like Noble Desktop does is that like it goes through like the guy who made a lot of the examples, like he went in depth, like he made a lot of practice problems to give people which is definitely like the hardest part with like learning SQL is that you just need to keep doing it. Um, the best way to do it is like, if you're just thrown into the deep end at your company and be like, go learn SQL. Um, the second left part of that is just like being able to get that muscle memory in of just writing queries all day. Okay. And this is like another one. Um, uh, his blog wrote like SQL for the rest of us. And he kind of like hashes through very similar stuff of like, what is SQL? What is a database schema? Um, you know, some basics of what a query is, um, you know, that whole select star, um, where clauses. So he has a lot of, like a lot of that stuff in here as well. First type of basic syntax, um, limits, you always want limits. Uh, window functions is just like definitely like not something you do in like, oh yeah, he writes in here. It's like, it's one of the more confusing parts of SQL. Um, I don't write them super often. And then like, you know, you, you write it a few times until like it makes, it makes sense. But yeah, name your stuff well. What was another big one? So different classes. W3 school is very hit or miss as I said. Um, another one, Code Academy. I don't know if they're still free. Um, some of these places they like they start free and then like if you want to get into projects they also make you pay um so that's like just something that like you know keep in mind um but like one of these places like why they really say like sql in 10 minutes is that you can get really far in those 10 minutes and then different tools so sql we used um pop sql i use they've actually they used to be much better um and then dbeaver which is like i've used at many companies and it just works with like almost every different type of uh, database you want to throw at it. Okay, and one, uh, one other one is select star SQL. Um, this is a, it's another like just interactive book about like free, you know, free mental model of how to like learn SQL. And there's just like another, another example of that. Okay. Uh, all right. So 
do we have uh, any more questions? We should have had the command, okay. So let's see, this did, so this is a query of different um, jobs per state. So let's say, okay, I only wanna care about the states that have more than, um, more, more or equal to 15 jobs. So what I do is I say, having count star greater than or equal to 15. And then I'm only gonna get these three states. So that's that's like just a comparison of like the where clause. So whenever you have, like you wanna filter it on an aggregate, you use the having clause and therefore you can write greater than or equal to 15. The question is, can a having clause can't be used on its own only with another command? Um, I'm not sure exactly like it. Yeah, you'd have to have some type of aggregate there and you would have, yeah, you would need, you would need another command to be like, okay, what is it having? And then it would be something that's aggregated. I hope that is that answer your question? Please let me know. Great. Just make sure we, you know, I think we talked about what is SQL, why it's popular, um, why it's good to learn, using a bunch of different industries throughout like, you know, real estate, ad tech, like, I don't, yeah, I, if anything has a database, they're using SQL. Anything have data, they have SQL. Different things you can do with SQL, you can get data in. Um, you can delete a bunch of spam. Uh, you can, yeah, analyze a lot of business intelligence. Overview of databases we did, why we need them. This is just so you don't have like, you know, a slew of, you know, Excel files, which we will, but like that's where your company held you have it like somewhere usually on like aws or some type of like cloud platform it's there it's backed up different um replication up there instead of being like okay all the data is on x y and z's local computer that doesn't happen anymore no means okay so that's a very good question about uh, nulls so no so what happens in, when you have an average it doesn't count nulls there's, there's a big difference between null and zero. So zero is zero. So it's like, like someone explained it to me this way is that like you can have zero dollars in your bank account or you can have no bank account. Effectively, they're the same thing in terms of like, oh, there's no money there. But it's like one is, well, there's an account there. There's some average there um, versus not. So no. there's one with like toilet paper or something I've seen that was really good. So this is zero, there's zero toilet paper here. There's literally no undefined is, there's like nothing there even. So one thing is, yeah. So when you have an, like if you have an average and you average in zero there, zero will shoot down your average a lot. But if you have a null, then it won't touch your average. Then it's not gonna be counted in whenever it does the arithmetic mean. But yeah, I mean, really write, write as many queries as you can. Um, you know, if you want something structured, uh, that's what the that's what these classes, either the boot camps, um, certificate classes, where it's like there's if you just want to learn SQL, there's a SQL boot camp. If it's more like, hey, I want to get into data science, I want to get into data analytics, there's different certifications where we kind of like pull all those classes together and kind of like create that syllabus for you. Um, and then there's some like, you know, if you want to like do a little bit more on your own, there's the data school um, or this one is by like Mode Analytics. They'll they'll have one as well. Yeah, they have one specifically for SQL. I believe this is Postgres, like when I taught it was Postgres. And then there's one like some people like their companies are SQL server and they're like, okay, if I'm gonna take one class, I'm gonna take the one that's more geared to what I do at work. But you know, once you learn, if you learn Postgres, SQL server will, it'll transfer fairly well. If you're like, oh, I learned this one, should have taken this one. They're very, very compatible. All right. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any more questions. I hope you guys all have a great night um, and I hope you uh, took a lot out of this class.